This is the Tom Bigby Tales, and I'm your host, Shannon Evans. Today's episode is called The Duncan Boys. This podcast is about a community along the Tom Bigby River called Columbus, Mississippi, and its surrounding areas, mostly Lowndes County. Dr. John Harvey Duncan ran a store at the McCrary Whistle Stop on the border between Columbus, Mississippi and the Alabama state line. It is near the present-day com- community of New Hope. Duncan was also the postmaster, and his store was almost 50 yards from the McCrary Depot. Duncan had three sons and a daughter from his first marriage and several children from his second marriage. Early in October of 1910, Frank Bell, a local prominent farmer, had gone to the store and an argument had broken out between the men. Dr. Duncan, known for being cantankerous, picked up a stick from behind his counter and began beating Bell. Bell left contacted the the sheriff, and had Duncan arrested for assault. Several months prior to the incident in the store, Bell was at the McCrary train station headed to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, when Dr. Duncan's 21-year-old son, Charlie, the local bully, walked in the waiting area and assaulted Bell. When Bell went to run out, when Charlie's brother Harvey blocked the door, Bell forced his way out, and ran down the tracks to escape, missing his train to Tuscaloosa. Before that case had gone to court, Bell and his wife, Marguerite Young Bell, were at the depot with their son to travel to Columbus about 14 miles away. On that day, August 26, 1910, Bell came to the station armed with a repeating rifle to protect his wife, infant son, and himself from anticipated additional problems with the the Duncan boys. He anticipated trouble with the Duncan boys, and he was right. Charlie appeared first, walking past the door to the waiting area, and stared at Bell. Charlie then went to the ticket booth to speak with the agent, Raleigh Johnson. Charlie then entered the waiting room, drawing his pistol. Bell shot Charlie first through the neck killing him instantly. Charlie's 16-year-old brother, Harvey, was in the store with Dr. Duncan. Harvey grabbed a shotgun and ran with his father, who was slowed by his cork leg that he earned after losing a limb in the Civil War, as they hobbled and ran to the train station. Harvey got off a shot, but it went wide, right as the train pulled in the station. Bell fired, killing Harvey, and then swung his wife and child up on the train to safety. They went to Columbus, immediately disembarked, and Bell went straight to the sheriff's office to turn himself in. Bell was held in the jail along with his wife and child for safekeeping as they feared retribution on his wife and child by the Duncan family. Bell was indicted by a grand jury and then bound over for trial. At the trial, Dr. Duncan testified that Charlie was at the train station just to catch the train going to Columbus. After hearing gunfire, Dr. Duncan ran from his store to the station and found Harvey face down between the station house and the railroad tracks and found Charlie in the station with a mortal gunshot wound in his neck. Cross-examination exposed the bad blood that previously existed between the two parties. There were no witnesses other than the Bell, than Fred Frank Bell and his wife. The ticket agent was not a reliable witness, clearly fearful of getting crossways with the Duncan family. He feigned that he didn't really know exactly what happened. Bell testified that Charlie approached the waiting room, drawing a gun. He then saw Harvey coming from the west with a shotgun and was right and Harvey was raising it to his shoulder to fire when Bell shot him through the glass, killing him. Bell was acquitted in the first trial for the death of Charlie. He was then acquitted of the second murder of Harvey as well as justifiable homicide. In 1912, Dr. Duncan's son from his second marriage, Shields, had a name for himself in McShan, western Alabama, 
and in East Mississippi in McCrary at the McCrary Station. Shields had a long-running feud with William Belcher from Birmingham, who had recently relocated to McShann. Shields was a bit of a bully himself, allegedly. The two young men had a prearranged meeting planned for that fateful Sunday morning at the M&O passenger station. Belcher stabbed Duncan first, resulting in a serious wound. Duncan then stabbed Belcher through the heart, causing instant death. Duncan then turned himself in while recovering from his injuries. He, too, was acquitted as there were no witnesses and he was injured first. Also, Duncan's maternal grandfather was John T. McShan Sr., a prominent member of a founding family of the county. And Mr. McShan owned the, and was the, owned the largest employer in the community, the McShan Sawmill. Shields Duncan worked for his grandfather, McShan, and would go on to serve in the military in World War I and then work for the railroad. He lived to be 91 years old and died in 1983. No other incidences with the law are found, and he is buried in Pickens County, Alabama. In December of 1912, another Duncan, Shields's first cousin, twice removed, 36-year-old Lindsey Duncan from Caledonia, Mississippi, shot and killed Arthur Manning, another prominent young man from the same community of Caledonia on Christmas Eve. Duncan was placed in jail and bound over for a grand jury where he too was indicted. Duncan's initial indictment resulted in a mistrial because he was not present when the conviction was read. A new trial was held and he became ill and thus another mistrial had to be called. The third time was the charm, however, and he was found guilty and sentenced to nine years in the penitentiary. He appealed the conviction and it was affirmed. In October of 1915, Governor Brewer finally pardoned him after serving only of less than two years, and he returned home, where he takes seriously ill and dies not even two years later in September of 1917. He is buried in Rowan Cemetery in Caledonia, Mississippi. Yes, the Duncan family was a wild bunch, but Mississippi and was still very much a wild western town. Until next time, I'm Shannon Evans, and this is the Tom Bigby Tales. I hope that if you wish to learn more about our county and about the homes and the people here, that you will follow the Historic Home Tours on and their Facebook page, and that you will like, subscribe, and share the Tom Bigby Tales. Until next time.